Hi, I'm Jacinth, a parenting coach and an ex-school teacher. Today, I have a very special guest here and she's none other than celebrity mom, Evelyn Tan. Evelyn is a mom to four kids and she wears many hats at home. I can't wait to chat with her and pick up some parenting tips. So let's get started. Hi, Jacinth. Hi everyone, I'm Evelyn and I'm an actress, a presenter, a mum of four, uh, homeschooling at some point, even now. <laughs> and I'm mum to four kids. They are 17 years old, 15, 13 and 9 years old. So it's quite a handful, yes. <laughs> I'm enjoying every moment of it. <laughs> yes, you will see more of Evelyn in our three-part video series, Parenting with Evelyn, brought to you by HP Instant Inc. In this video, Evelyn will talk about homeschooling, early childhood education, as well as teach us her best tips when she engages her children with different learning styles. She'll even show you exactly how to use the 10 gram printable and how she uses it to engage her children. This printable is free for your download in the HP website. You can click the link in the description below. I print this for my kids as well and I use HP Instant Ink, which is an ink subscription service that automatically delivers ink to your doorstep at no delivery charge. And I can save up to 50% on ink cartridges and it is very sustainable as well. Right now, HP is offering a three months free trial of HP Instant Ink if you own or purchase any of HP's eligible printer. The sign up link is in the description below. Well, Jacinth, I'm also signed up with HP Instant Ink as well. You know, before school going kids, you know, we have got quite a lot to print out your uh, test papers, you know, your forms, your tuition. Yeah. So uh, I, it's always good to know that my ink will always be full and that there's always enough. Yeah. Yes. So I know that you have four kids, mm -hmm. you're homeschooling them. And when I asked, my followers, you know, I post a question sticker on my uh, Instagram and some of them are curious because they want to be homeschooling their kids as well. Ah. So I'm wondering if, you know, there are certain challenges that you face and how do you know that homeschooling is right for your kids? Okay, now when we chose homeschooling, we chose it because we felt that, you know, it could offer us some flexibility in terms of, you know, um, uh, catering, our, to, uh, catering it to the needs of our children. You know, so for those who are slower in learning, you know, um, we can actually adjust the pace mm. to the person, right? Or if let's say, you know, he or she is faster um, than her peers, then, you know, we could accordingly adjust. Yeah, it also takes away the competitiveness of uh, studying in a school setting because, you know, then you won't be like comparing results and all that. Yeah, so learning can be just for the sake of learning. Yeah, uh, but of course, there are also challenges. Yeah, you have to be the TP teacher, you have to be the, you know, uh, the bus driver, the canteen auntie, all rolled into one. So, um, uh, yeah, sometimes we do farm out things, you know, like to tutors or we organize co-ops where uh, our children with similar homeschooling families can come together and learn together. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure there'll be a lot of challenges as mm -hmm. well. And you mentioned that your kids have dyslexia and dyspraxia, two of them. Mm -hmm. So we'll go into that in episode two. Okay. But right now, we'll talk about early childhood for the little children. Mm -hmm. And I know that you signed up for early childhood course. Yes. So what made you come to that decision? Okay, I wanted to make sure that, you know, I know how a child develops, you know, uh, whether it's be, be in the social uh, area in, in terms of the emotional uh, area development or the motor skills development or, you know, cognitively or the language uh, development. And I know that when we address those needs of the children in the developmental ages, uh, especially from zero to six or seven, all right, uh, in the early years, um, we actually can help foster confidence in them, uh, build up their self-esteem and then, you know, just generally help them along because they tend to make sense of the world with their five senses and you being there to guide them along, you know, helping them um, make sense of this world that they live in is so important. Yeah. Yes, I agree. With the knowledge, we can also understand what is their preferred learning style. That's right. Yeah, so based on research, there are actually different learning styles. But if we look at the VARK model, so V for visual learners, mm -hmm. A for auditory, R for reading and writing, and K for kinesthetic learners. So if we can teach our kids to learn with their preferred learning styles, they can absorb information much better. That's right. You have four kids and they have different <laughs> learning styles. How do you do that? How do you give attention to them? <laughs> so you have to be attentive and I think, you know, uh, being with them. So I made a conscious decision, you know, to be with them during their early years. And I think, you know, it really helped me see what their learning um, preferences are like, like for my second one. So now he's the one with uh, the dyslexia. And, you know, unlike his sister, his sister would be able to read books uh, at age five. And, you know, she would be absorbing language, information, just like that and I didn't even you know consciously explicitly teach her how to read and she just picked it up 
But for him, he finds it so difficult um, to read words. And so I found that, you know, this is probably not the mode through which he will receive information. And I found that, you know, uh, God is good. <laughs> he actually gave him an auditory uh, preference in learning and he actually picks up things very, very quickly just by hearing and listening. So, you know, instead of um, getting him to read a book, you know, we will play audio tapes for him. And that's how he picked up the language itself so fast. Yeah, but of, of course, you know, uh, having said that, knowing a child's preferred learning style doesn't mean to say that you just hone in on that and use that alone because you want to develop the child holistically. So I'll also make sure that, you know, I have visual cues for him to help him along, you know, to remind him of things that he needs to do throughout the day, for example, you know, and uh, I also put out a lot of um, uh, labels like, you know, table, you know, this is how you read table and this is the word that is associated with him so that um, the, the link is there and um, there is more input visually as well. And also I find that, you know, with young children, they tend to be very naturally kinesthetic learners. Yeah, they like to move as they learn. And so, um, you know, we provide a lot of uh, such uh, opportunities, whether it's small motor movements or big motor movements. Like, you know, with Tangram, you can learn so much. A lot of parents think that, you know, a Tangram activity is probably just mm, sorting shapes and trying to figure out, but you know, they are actually training the child in patience you know, problem solving, you know, the tenacity to sit down there and make sure that you get this whole thing uh, solved out. And also not just that, um, there's a lot of spatial awareness that goes on into it. And also being able to visualize it, uh, relating it to something that you already know. For example, you know, this uh, triangle, you know, for some it might be a triangle, but you know, you, you can actually encourage creativity and uh, imagination by maybe just asking him, what does this remind you of? And the person can say it's a hat, mm -hmm. right? It's a smile on somebody's face or something, you know? Yeah, so there's lots of learning opportunities that can uh, be derived from a simple activity like that. I really like the idea that you involve the children and allow them to be creative mm -hmm. and imaginative. And I think it'd be great if we can align what we teach them to their interests. Yes, definitely. Yeah, but do you have any tips for that? How do we do that? Okay, so like, you know, my number three, he is the typical boyish kind of character. You know, he likes uh, tanks, uh, cars and superheroes. Yeah. So I remember, you know, when I tried to teach him alphabets, he would be, no, 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 and then be off somewhere. But, you know, I, um, I, I try and hone in on the fact that he likes superheroes. So, you know, what does Superman starts with? So, you know, we will play a game and then we will make um, su uh, the, the, the letter S, all right, the shape of the S uh, by pretending that we're superheroes and we're Superman and we're, you know, doing that S shape. And so, you know, he's actually using his body to write out S instead of, you know, just uh, the traditional way of sitting down at a table and then writing S, 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 mm. S, S for a hundred times and, you know, nothing gets in. But if he, if he uses his body, so sometimes we will also get you to get him to use his butt to draw S, oh. you know, to draw other shapes, yeah. So we'll try and find superheroes that starts with um, a, every single letter of the alphabet, all right? And, you know, the beginning sound will correlate with that superhero character. And so I think, you know, it was very easy for him then to relate alphabets and then slowly lead him on to the next step of blending letters. Mm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so other than like, um, you know, their interests mm. in terms of superhero, in your everyday life, how do you like guide them along? There are so many things that we can use as our props in teaching our children. So one of the things that I use a lot is food. <laughs> children like to eat, right? Especially sweet little things, you know? Yeah, so we have grapes, we have, uh, you know, your cereals, yeah. And all these small things that they can reach out for biscuit pieces and we will do food mats with it. Whenever mm. it's time for mats, I say, mats time! Go, oh. But when it's food mats, you know, it will be a different expression. The twinkle in the eye will happen and uh, they will sit down gladly and they will do one-to-one -one correspondence with me learn how to divide, how to multiply, you know, uh, look at things in sets, and uh, how to even, you know, from a pizza, learn fractions, right? Yeah. yeah. I'm a math educator myself, so I'm very heartened to hear you say this. In fact, I think all parents should use concrete objects to bring abstract math concepts to life. That's right. Evelyn, thank you so much for sharing all these valuable practical tips of parents. I think we'll all benefit. So we'll end today's session by mm -hmm. maybe summing up with three takeaways. Okay. You can do the first and the third, and I'll do the second. Sure, sure. I think, you know, for children because, you know, being young, they need to um, learn concrete things by really manipulating with these things. So, and they learn through their senses. So, you know, expose them to lots of a variety of activities that can allow them to engage with the world around them through their senses. 
My second takeaway is to find out your child's preferred learning style and that will help them absorb information better. But at the same time, like Evelyn shared, you should also expose them to different learning styles so that they can start to learn in many ways as well. Hmm. And I think thirdly, in order to move from concrete to abstract, the child needs to actually really experience real life stuff. So use printables, you know, things that they can manipulate and play with. And you know, you'll be then able to see that uh, transition from concrete to abstract being a lot more smoother. Yes. Thank you, Evelyn. In next episode, we will talk about helping children with learning difficulties mm. and specifically dyslexia and dyspraxia. If you want to find out more, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell so you'll be notified. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.